let's discuss the importance of high resolution spectra in XPS. For complete XPS analysis, we require two spectra, the survey spectra and high resolution spectra. From survey spectra, we identify the elements exist. From high resolution spectra, we identify the chemical states that how this atom is bonded with another atoms, whether this atom is bonded with more electronegative elements or less electronegative elements. What is the oxidation state of this element? So this is the standard XPS spectra for chlorine and this one is called survey spectra. From survey spectra, we simply identify the types of element exist. And now we have to focus the most important peak here and here it is a 2p peak and we do not know that there are two peaks but once we take the high resolution xp spectra and this peak become two peaks and this is we call convoluted peak and this one is we call deconvoluted peak so now we can see that the two peaks are separated from each other and it's visible and this spectra is called high resolution spectra similarly this is the standard xp spectra for silver and this is the survey spectra from survey spectra we simply identify the type of elements exist now we have to focus the most important line or peak and this is the most important peak this is we we cannot see these two peaks separate so we have to resolve it so once we resolve this peak we get this type of peaks and this is we call high resolution xps spectrum we can clearly see that these two type of peaks with separation and we can now identify the area, find the area under these peaks. These are the most important points about the high resolution spectra. How binding energy changes with changing the chemical state. This is one chemical state, this is another chemical state, this is another chemical state. So when we bring more electronegative elements closer to the carbon, so the binding energy increases. Similarly, when we bring more electronegative elements toward the carbon, so the binding energy increases. Let's discuss the importance of high resolution spectra in XPS. For complete XPS analysis, we require two spectra. The first one is called survey spectra. The second one is called high resolution spectra. So in this video, I will be only talk about high resolution spectra. In X-ray photo electron spectroscopy, we simply bombard X-ray of known energy on the samples and this X-ray photon completely converts it energy to the core electrons and the core electron is K from the sample and this is we call photo electrons. So we, we, we have this famous equations from photoelectric effect here. Uh, this is photon energy and this is binding energy and this is the kinetic energy of the photoelectron and the work function of the spectrometers so the kinetic energy we get from the xps spectrometer and this is known here and this work function is known and we can easily calculate the binding energy then from the binding energy table we calculate we infer that what type of elements exist and this information we get from survey spectra now we do not know that this carbon atom make bond with oxygen here or fluorine here or with nitrogen we do not know this information so for this kind of information we need to run high resolution spectra uh, once we get the survey spectra and we identify the elements like in this case carbon so now it is the time to know in depth analysis this is why this high resolution spectra is also called more detailed spectral graph we know that these two are the common x-ray sources in xps for survey spectra as well as for high resolution spectra now once we get the a survey spectra then we will focus basically on the most important peak of the survey spectra and then we will analyze basically for chemical state analysis chemical state mean that for example this c is uh, making bond with c carbon sample so this is a chemical state this C is making bond with oxygen this is we call the chemical state of the carbon I mean it is now uh, making bond with oxygen similarly this carbon make bond with uh, nitrogen similarly make double bond with oxygen this make bond with uh, fluorine here or uh, uh, something else here 
HF2, whatever. So this is basically we call the chemical state. So high resolution basically uh, give the information about the chemical state here. Uh, there is also very important we call spin orbit separation that we represent by delta here. For example, we know that we have one peak here and another peak here. This may be uh, P3 by 2 peak and this is P half peak. So the separation between these two peaks are basically called spin orbit separation we represent by this delta. Let's discuss this XPS spectra for chlorine here using this aluminum K alpha source here. So we know chlorine has uh, atomic number 17 here and this spectra is basically the survey spectra for chlorine. This is basically called survey spectra because from here we uh, get the information about the elements and once we get this binding energy here and we, when we compare the binding energy uh, of this XPS spectra with the binding energy table. So we found that this binding energy belongs to chlorine and we identified the elements and this is basically called qualitative analysis. So this is basically called the survey spectra. Now we have to see whether this chlorine making bond with surrounding atom or not. Whether the valence electron of the chlorine atom losses or gain electrons. Whether this chlorine is more electronegative or other element is more electric, electronegative. So for this information we have to uh, take the most important peak. So this, this K is not, this is potassium here, this is because this chlorine is in the potassium chloride matrix. So this is not important peak. This 2P peak is very, very important. So uh, it is now convoluted here. This is we call convoluted. Convoluted here because it is now the mix of two peaks basically, but we need resolutions. So when we resolve it, so this peak basically looks like this one. This is called one peak is this one here, another peak is this one. So this spectra, this spectrum we call high resolution spectrum. Similarly, this also we take this important peak for OJ electron and we, when, we, when we use high resolutions, so it, it looks like two peaks here. Look at the similar spectra, but in this case now it is silver here. Silver has atomic number 47. So this is basically the survey spectra. This is basically the survey spectra. It gives us the information about the elements. So we identified from the binding energy table that this spectra belongs to silver. Now we are interested more because we want to know that whether this silver making bond with other elements or not. What is the, the, the environment of this silver? So for that purpose, we have to take the high resolution spectra and this is basically the high resolution spectra. We just focus here the most important line, the most important peak and this is the most important peak here. Now it is, it is already separated here, but we cannot determine the full width half maxima. We cannot determine the intensity properly. We cannot determine the peak position here, the peak position. This is why we need high resolution spectra. So when we resolve this uh, peak here, this uh, important peak here, so we can see here, now it's very visible. We can see the area under the uh, peak here because I know that in this case, in this orbitals, we have more electrons than this one because the area is uh, more is compared to this one here. So this uh, peak here contains more uh, Electron. This is basically also called the separation between these two peaks here and you, you cannot separate these two peaks here because this is we call this delta and the separation between this spin orbit splitting and it is given here, right? So this is basically the high resolution uh, XPS spectra. Similarly, we also resolve this important peak from OJ electron and it, it can be shown here that there are two distinct peaks here, but here it is it, it seem one peak. These are the important points about high resolution XPX spectra, very, very important. It can resolve small differences in binding energy. You see here, because when we resolve it, so the, the differences are very clear in the binding energy. It can resolve overlapping peaks. For example, in the survey spectra, the peaks are overlap, but when we take the high resolution XP spectra, so the overlapping is finished. Now the peaks looks like separate here. And we can clearly see the peak separation here. And we can resolve easily the peak position from 
survey spectra, it is difficult to identify the exact peak position. The exact peak position means exact binding energy. And because of this high resolution, the intensity is visible here. The, the width, the full width of each component is very clear. And so we can easily calculate the area under the cuff. The most important part is here. The convoluted spectra is converted to deconvoluted. Convoluted basically means mixing of two signals. Mixing of two signals. And then we separate in deconvoluted process. We separate those two peaks. Like, like here, this is one peak here. And this is two peak here and once we take the high resolution so we get this two peaks here this is 2p 3 by 2 and 2p half let's take the best example of high resolution xps spectra for chemical state identification chemical state i explained chemical state means that when carbon attached with the carbon one chemical state when carbon attached with oxygen another when it is in double bond here so this is another state when there is more carbon atom, so it is another chemical state. So this is basically chemical state. How the environment of the elements looks like, that is basically called chemical states. So this is very important here. This is, for example, carbon atoms. In these carbon atoms are attached with each other. So this is there is a carbon-carbon atoms here. So it has it has a constant binding energy, right? It has constant binding energy. And this binding energy we can calculate from uh, survey spectra. Now, when there is an oxygen atom making bond with the carbon here, so we know that oxygen is more electronegative, so it will attract more electrons from the carbon, it will attract more electrons, so the carbon will become more positive and the binding energy will increase here, the binding energy will greater here. This is why we say that here the binding energy is less when we attach oxygen, so more higher binding energy and more higher binding energy and more higher binding energy because you add more electronegative and more electron will pull from the carbon and the carbon binding energy will increase so this kind of information we get from high resolution xps spectra uh, this is the similar theory here i explained from the figure and you read it by yourself i will also keep this in the post now let's explain the similar problem uh, for chemical state using high resolution uh, xps spectra high resolution xps spectra now when carbon is attached with the carbon so the binding energy is this much and we get this information from uh, survey spectra from survey spectra now when when there is a nitrogen uh, atom uh, making bond with the carbon so this nitrogen is more electronegative so it will it will pull more electron from the carbon and this the binding energy will uh, increases so this is why we have the increased binding energy you see here similarly if we uh, replace nitrogen with oxygen so the same binding energy because they have the same characteristics and when we have double bonding now uh, up with carbon so double bonding means that the pulling power is more now this oxygen is more electronegative this oxygen will attract more electrons because there are so many carbon atoms so it will attract more electrons and the binding energy will further increase and if we use fluorine here uh, instead of oxygen this is more electronegative so it will more attract the electrons from the carbon and the 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 the, the, the binding energy will further increases this is how that in the trend we can see here that the binding energy increases if we attach more electronegative uh, elements to the carbon and this kind of information uh, uh, about chemical state we get from high resolution XPS spectra.